selection.
Thank you. 
Go ahead and lift up a word of prayer over the offering this morning. Father God, we just thank you that we can bring before you this offering and each and every offering out of our lives this week, our offerings of service. We ask that you would bless them and multiply them around our community and around our world with the message of salvation through faith in your risen son, Jesus of Nazareth. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning, all. Do we have any big fun announcements this week? Everyone's loving back being in school, right? Yeah, go team. Yeah, let the process roll on. <laughs> so, anyways, we'll see. Still, still looking for Sunday school or youth group people. Okay. Um, FYI, we'll still happily take help for the youth group, little, middle, and big, for help for for anyone for help for that process. And like, you don't have to commit to it for the full season. If you can commit to one Wednesday, that one Wednesday might be the influence that your life can make on one child's in the group's life. It might totally alter their course to help them come to know Jesus more personally as their Lord and Savior. You never know when the drop in the bucket that we can be will make the ripples that God wants us to have with our lives. So, anyways. Youth group help appreciated, and youth group will be starting after Labor Day, correct? Okay. For those who have no idea when Labor Day is, they don't ever pay attention to that. When is Labor Day? Uh, first, uh, first Saturday. First Monday in September. First, first Monday in September. Okay. Fourth. Okay. So yeah, sometime around there, we'll have more announcements as it progresses on, but <laughs> <laughs> it will be more official later on, but. Either way, let's go ahead and start off with a uh, word of prayer for the message this morning. And Father God, we just thank you that we can gather together and as your children through faith in Jesus of Nazareth. And we just ask that, I ask, Father, for your Holy Spirit to speak your gospel to all of our open ears and hearts, that we could grow in our relationship with you and with our fellow man. We just thank you for this time to gather together and to learn together. In Jesus' name, amen. So yeah, morning all. And a uh, fun story to start off. I, I hope it's fun for you as it was for me anyways. Story to start with. But first we'll have Psalms 40 verse 1 to ponder and meditate on. The technology was being friendly for us. But Psalm 40 verse 1 in the Amplified Version says, I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. I was blessed with the opportunity this week to uh, be able to have that verse be applied to my own life and to our cow working life. Because the great cows that we have, 
and Westwood. They uh, pulled their Houdini move and somehow were able to lift a heavy gate because the gate manufacturer, the local gentleman who takes care of our cows for us, he knows how to build a solid gate and it's a heavy gate. How those cows figured out how to get said gate off the hinge, lift it clear off of the hinge, that would have been a fun show to watch. <laughs> but I was just tootling along the town thinking, oh, good afternoon to go check the cows. This will be good. So we headed out there towards the cows and pulled down. No one was around the place, but as I pulled down into the yard, I see the gate off the hinge, standing up just on the ground, wide open. And I hadn't seen very many cows. I saw one cow and a few calves still in the pasture and thing. So I thought, okay. You know, the head scratching starts and pondering and looking up for uh, help. <laughs> the help starts to sing out from your spirit to God's spirit. And anyways, through the course of keeping open eyes and whew, that slow down, deep breath, patience, to look around and see the scenario and where the cow caretakers were at and whatnot, so I could figure out what was going on, I started, was able to buzz around on the four-wheeler, heard another four-wheeler ride, riding around, saw more cows than the other pasture, the, the landowner's own, fortunately, figured out where they were at, and long story short, through all this jostling around and stuff, my initial cowboy reaction, go do something, right? That's the, gotta go do, do, do. Gotta provide the solution. I can do this, I got this. Let's get this done, you know? We need them where they're supposed to be and I'm a cowboy, I can handle this, we got this. Fortunately, God's Holy Spirit, you know, you ever have those moments where you get in a hustle in a hurry and you're thinking about something and His Holy Spirit just almost taps you on the shoulder and whew, take a deep breath, slow down. Let's look everything over here a little closer. And through the course of looking things over closer and talking with our dear cow, cow caretakers, they were, we were able to set up and figure out all the cows were in their pastures. So, okay, peace of mind there for that. There was calves in the pasture where they were supposed to be. The moms were on the other side of the fence. So through some head scratching and thinking, we need to pair them back up, but we'll let overnight take care of that. The cows will get hungry and come back to their baby, or the calves will be hungry. The cows will be full and come back to their babies. So we left one gate open, gate shut between them. It worked out that six of the cows came back in and the bull and the cow, the landlords took care of shuffling them over where they should be. I showed up the next morning running classically, Dano, later than planned, but miraculously it worked out. God's miracles worked out fine with me running later than planned because I was able to get there and hear where the cows were bawling and the calves were still bawling. And through the course of just being patient and opening and shuffling a couple gates a couple times, the cows across the river came back across to the water lot, and lo and behold, all of them, over the course of the morning, were in the water lot and back out in the west pasture where they should be. And I give you this long, fun bovine spiel, just based on the idea of remembering to just slow down and wait patiently and expectantly for the Lord, seeking his guidance and Okay, God, I know I can't do this on my own with a four-wheeler in weeds that are, no doubt, from the floor to here about this high, you know, along the river bottoms out there. There's no way that was going to happen with one cowboy on a four-wheeler. That was going to be a tall order for several cowboys on horseback. So I just turned it over to God, let go and let God, and let him guide the creature's minds that were involved, and lo and behold, by 11 o'clock the following morning, all the animals from both pastures were in the water lot corral and the gates were shut so they couldn't get out. And I was able to go through with technology working and get a pinpoint head count on every ear tag in the lot. And that's the whole list that was there. Everything came back and just that patient, remembering to wait patiently and expectantly for God and for him to move in a situation that I need help with and that I've cried out to him for help with whether I cried out verbally and vocally or just in my mind and my spirit, help, 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 God, please. So in this fun cow testimony story, I wanted to think back to, uh, to our dear friend Martha from last week and the idea of service and go, 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 do, 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 be, 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 nonstop, 
consistent go, go, going, and thinking about good deeds. In Titus 2, verses 13 to 14, we can read, How we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. So I can look at myself in the mirror each night and ask, have I been totally committed to doing good deeds today? And fortunately, praise God, he gives us the opportunity and the ability and the realization to be able to repent, to bow before him and say, Father God, I know in this one little avenue, in this one little area, all up here in the thinker, I didn't honor and glorify you with my thoughts about this subject, this place, this situation, this person, whoever it is. I wasn't honoring to you with my thoughts about them, Father, and I would like to repent of that and turn that over to you, and I thank you for your forgiveness through the blood of Jesus for that infraction in my thinking against your will. And uh, I can remember, too, that Jesus is my one necessity. All of our one necessity for each active shortcoming to be removed from a believer's mind and thoughts and their lives. If I want something removed from my life, it has to be removed from my thinking first and foremost. And I can rely and call on Jesus to Father, Father God, Lord Jesus, please help me purify my thinking and cleanse my thinking on this scenario, this subject, whatever, these deeds, these good deeds that I want to do. Please help guide my thinking about them. And looking into uh, Ephesians 2, verse 10, we can see God's view of who we can be through faithful and prepared service in Jesus' name. You know, I'm going to do good deeds. Who's going to get the credit for it? Personally, I want the credit to go for anything that I can do up to him. Because he is the reason and the strength and the guidance and wisdom that I have to be able to do any good deed. And in Ephesians 2, verse 10, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Every good thing I can do, every good thing you can do, our Heavenly Father had planned out and laid out for our life to be done. Are we being diligent children and spending time with him to say, okay, Father, what's next? What's the next right step? What's the next right move in the correct direction? And a focus thinking about this message was thinking about the service work, especially for others. So much of the focus seems to always be on the do factor, the action, the go, do, 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 whatever it is. But some of the greatest service work I can do for anyone, especially myself, is up here in my thoughts. Because every word, every action, the way I live my life is going to start out as a thought. So I want to have healthy thinking and great service work that I can do for everyone else, including myself. How can I help my thinking be healthy? Oh, rewind, sorry. We'll get the tongue straightened out here. <laughs> going right. How can I get my thinking healthier and going safely and sanely in the right direction? And uh, knowing the how, the when, and as well hopefully the why can help any situation or action, the good deed, be more doable. And to know how to do that deed best, I need to have open to hear that still small voice. In Psalms 24, verse 14, we are encouraged about hearing that still small voice. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. When I get in my hurry, go, 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 do, do, do mode, stopping to take those three or four deep breaths, whatever, however many deep breaths the Holy Spirit guides our thoughts and thinking to. OK, 
okay, is this the right action? Is this the right words? Is this the right scenario for to help this person, this situation, this time, whatever we're working with, whatever good deed is being done, is this the correct avenue to go? And then having that peace from God's Holy Spirit through that still small voice saying, yeah, go ahead, son, go ahead, daughter. Let's do this. You got this. And uh, that waiting patiently for the full, waiting patiently for the Lord, would anyone else say, think that uh, that can seem difficult at some, some moments in life? I'll just stand up here and say yes. Some moments in life, the waiting patiently for the Lord. But they're getting out, God. We gotta stop them. <laughs> or whatever the scenario might be. But quieted, open ears, and an open mind, and an open heart, I can receive his guidance. And you can receive his guidance. When we slow down and wait patiently for God to hear his still small voice speaking to us about the how and the what to say, and the why. We can be encouraged in Luke 8, verse 15, by our Lord and Savior. Jesus gives us some good words here on who it is being soil, soil for his word. Each and every one of us here this morning is soil that can receive God's word. His word, however, he speaks it to us. The things we can see, his Holy Spirit guiding our thoughts. So God, Jesus is teaching about being good soil. And in Luke 8, verse 15, talking about the seeds. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. So God's word being planted in a... Let's look at the definition again. An honest and good heart. And I can bear fruit with his word being planted in an honest and good heart. So am I maintaining the soil of my heart? With my thinking and my honesty. And my realization of what's going on in the ground that the seed has been, around the ground that the seed has been planted in. Another quick bunny trail thought. You know, you plant a seed in the ground and the soil that that seed is in, boy, that's the nurturing soil. But if something comes right alongside that pathway, and all of a sudden a concrete path is laid right next to where that soil is at for that seed, the soil that the seed, it's the same soil that the seed is laying in, but that soil has been influenced and impacted because now there's weed spray going on along the edge of the concrete, and that soil is being impacted, and so the seed will be impacted. That's just a bunny trail to ponder and think on later on this afternoon of just keeping the soil healthy and realizing that the soil, the situations around the soil might change and impact that soil as well. And uh, thinking about who am I empowering with my thoughts and thus my faith? Am I focusing on the positive message of God's good news of his love, his gospel truth? Is that what I'm thinking on about a person, situation, a place, whatever the scenario might be? Or am I letting this get drifted off and drugged away into the lies of the enemy? The can'ts, the won'ts, the not good enoughs. Is the thinking being drugged away into that negativity? Or am I staying solid and anchored on, all right, God, I know this situation and how it looks and it feels uncomfortable. But I trust your promise and your truth in this person. You know, I trust that by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. So therefore, I'm going to go forward as a healed individual, thinking about health and wellness. And we have promises in his word for every situation we might find ourselves in. And we can stay encouraged in Exodus 14, verse 14. We are encouraged... The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. <sighs> okay. God, I'm trusting that you are going to fight for me. And the fight not necessarily meaning that fists coming up, swinging down here on the physical earth. But the fighting of winning the battle in my mind. And thus, 
winning the battle of the words and the actions that come out of my life and how that will influence everyone else involved god is going to fight for me and i trust that he will fight for me in the ways of being able to influence others hearts and minds into the guidance of his love just like cows that decide they want to go on walkabout and they can be guided back into the correct pin with the right water so the gate can be closed right <laughs> I can trust that God is going to influence those that I that will help both parties be healthier through his influence. And I can remember that God will uh, participate in any battle that I face, especially when I remember to slow down and ask him for help. You know, as a dad, you know, when my son wants help with something and needs some help with something, or my daughter needs help with something, and they ask, oh, sure, no problem. But am I going to help them with their situation if they haven't asked me? Maybe, I might, but I might not see the situation or might not think, okay, it's that big of a deal to them at this point in time. But when they come and ask me, okay, it's a big deal to them. I wanna pay attention and help them out. And our Heavenly Father, We'll know it's a big deal for us when we bring it forward to him and say, God, I need your help with this, please. I need your wisdom, your guidance. And I can be encouraged in Proverbs 16, verse 32, that a better, a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. That's an interesting one to think about and meditate on, isn't it? Especially in our culture. Bigger, stronger, better, faster. Pause. Time out. Better a patient person. Whew. All right. Looking the whole situation over, taking into account everybody that's involved and all the things, people, places, and things involved in the situation and having self-control with that versus let's charge forward and conquer. And, uh, that idea of self-control. Better is one with self-control than one who takes a city. And one of the greatest services that we can provide is to remember self-care. My self-control can bring about good self-care. And if I'm taking care of myself, I can love my neighbor as myself more effectively, right? Loving the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving my neighbor as myself. If I'm not taking care of myself, and everything that I'm putting into my thoughts and not loving my neighbor as effectively as I can. And with the self-control enabled by a relationship with God as Heavenly Father, faith can be had and applied to our promise that we have in 2 Chronicles 15, verse 7. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 7 in the NLT tells us, But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. Personally, that's one that I want to hold on to. Okay, Father God, I trust and remember waited patiently and expectantly. I'm patiently trusting and expecting this work and these good deeds to be rewarded. I trust that you will reward them in the correct way, in the correct time, that will help the most people involved come to know you better but I trust and expect for this good deed to be rewarded. And uh, remembering too that much of my work that I think so often to, is a to-do work, much of that work is based around applying my faith to each situation in my life based on God's promise as his child. My faith and applying my faith the words of my mouth, the actions of my body, the way that I'm living life, being influenced by the faith that I'm claiming for a situation, for a person, for a, whatever, the, whatever the thing around that we're dealing with is. What is my faith? How am I exhibiting my faith on that? And one of the do's that I can apply is my faithful patience. Remember that idea of the day of rest? That was kind of a big one. It got put in the, up there in the top 10, right? 
remembering to take that time of rest and not just you know sitting on the couch rest but that rest of slowing down keeping the race running up here slow down and just factoring back to okay for God so loved the most classic verse in all of human kind right now I think probably we could say John 3 16 and it's kind of nice to modify that verse sometimes in one special way to make it more personal for God so loved Dan that he gave his only begotten son that if Dan believed in him Dan would have everlasting life and each one of us can put our name in there because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but should have everlasting life I'm an us and a whoever, <laughs> each one of us in here is this morning. So we can remember that and be encouraged. In James 5, verses 7 to 8, we're encouraged to be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth? Being patient about it until it receives the early and late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Some of the greatest service a believer can accomplish. Making sure my heart is right with God, my Heavenly Father, and can receive from Him His love, because His love is going to pass through us into all the world around us. I have to have a heart that's ready to receive love so that it can pass love on. As we go forward into this week, Romans 8.25 was the verse I wanted to have in our memories thinking about, that I thought would be good to have in our memories thinking about through the week. 8.25 in the Amplified Version. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait, for, we wait eagerly for it with patience and composure. So, I have my hopes, you have your hopes, and we can each wait patiently with composure. Has anyone else ever waited like this? <laughs> the tension, <laughs> see me? But if I can remember to just wait patiently, okay, it's a new day. God, it hasn't quite worked out the way that I was hoping for yet, but I trust and I have my hope that this is going to come to pass. May this continue to come to pass and bless all those involved with it, Father. In Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and lift up any prayers that we have this week to our Heavenly Father this morning. And besides prayers for working technology. Lori's surgery that went, had one surgery done. Is our first name? Jamie. Jamie. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other? I'd like to remember all the people who've lost loved ones. Yes. And I know Irene Saunders is having a, a service for her son, Lewis, that passed away a while back. Lewis Saunders? I believe the service is Friday at the Catholic Church at 1030. I think that's what I saw in the paper. Okay, so there's peace and comfort for everyone going through a time of grief.
that the time of grief could help them, their heart, their mind, and their soul heal and become more grounded and closer in their relationship with God. Lord Lori lifted up for health and healing and restoration for her thyroid issues. The people in Maui. The what? Oh, yes, all the people in town in Maui. And the residents of, of the nursing home, if they can find a place to go. Yes, keep the, all the people in Maui lifted up through their time with that fire and the residents in our local nursing home, that each one of them could find a, a good, safe, sane, peaceful home and rest, place to enjoy time, enjoy their time. So new, new homes for all of the nursing home residents. Safe, good new homes for all the nursing home residents. Teachers, kids, everyone involved with the school system, but especially the kids that. And all over the United States and how far this country is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then for that one, worldwide, the youthful population that all the worldwide youth could be set free from anything that's dark and enveloping them in darkness, so that they could all come to know about the light and the love that God has for them. Let's lift all these prayers up to our Heavenly Father this morning. Father God, we just thank you that we can come before you and bring forward prayers boldly and expectantly, Father. We thank you for the abundance of moisture this year and also the cooler weather setting back in. We thank you that there doesn't have to be, and we ask that there not be an intense more amount of hot, hot, hot weather, but we just thank you for the good, healthy, sane, correct weather for all of us, that your will could be accomplished. And Father, we would ask for comfort and peace through a time of grief for anyone who has lost lost a family member a loved one a friend we lift up lewis saunders his mom and his family and friends we just ask for peace and comfort for them through their time of grief and that each of them could go through a healthy full time of grief that they could their lives could be reestablished with you and just be anchored in you closer and more personally father we would also like to lift up Lori Christensen, as well as Jeannie and Lori Connect, and ask for wisdom for all of the doctors and nurses helping them, each one of them, and that their, their bodies would receive your health and wellness and restoration, and just that they would have peace, that their soul would have peace through the process, and that the doctors would have the wisdom to be your hands of help for them through the processes that they are going on in life right now, Father. We just thank you that you are the God who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. And Father, we lift up the people of Maui and the people dealing with the Hawaiian fires. We just ask for safety and wisdom and guidance for each one of them and peace and comfort for them as they go through this trying time. And that peace, comfort, and wisdom could come out of this whole situation for all those involved and that the world that is watching them right now, that everyone could learn from it as well. So that the mistake, any mistakes that have been made there can be learned from and not made again. And Father, we would lift up all of the residents in our local nursing home and just ask that each one of them would have a, a safe new place and a safe new home to be able to migrate to where they could have peace and comfort and enjoyment of time on earth, Father. And we just thank you for wisdom and safety and guidance for each one of the nursing home residents finding a new home. We thank you for the health and wellness you've provided for many of our family and friends. We just lift up, and we would also lift up uh, and ask for safety and wisdom and guidance for all of our medical personnel and peace, peace of mind and heart, and also for our military and our first responders. Father, we ask for those blessings 
we lift up all of our teachers and especially all of the kids in the schools and just all of the kids worldwide wherever they're at father that they could come to know and receive the revelation of your love for them and how to have a relationship with you father we thank you for this in jesus name and ask all these prayers with the prayer that he taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen now the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace, friends. Grace and peace and have a joyful, God-filled week. Thanks for doing that.